I V M. Hey everybody, welcome to another week on the IVM Podcast Network. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Paytm Money Upfront. We're still in lockdown and uh, we're trying our best to make our releases work, but we are occasionally getting a little late or slipping on some episodes. Hope that you guys continue to remain patient with us. Check out our uh, social media accounts. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We're doing something over there called the IVM Smart Guide. A bunch of our hosts are talking about things to do during the lockdown, books, movies, podcasts, etc. Check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And uh, uh, let's get you onto your show right now. Welcome to another episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. We are super excited to bring a very, very special guest to you today. We've been kind of talking about this a little while on social media. The person we're going to share with you, obviously, is very, very big on social media herself, but most well known, of course, for having almost cemented, I want to say, her spot as the number three batsman in the Indian women's cricket side. And if you haven't figured out who I'm talking about already, of course, we are thrilled to be joined by Jamima Rodriguez. Jamima, thank you for being on the Edges and Sludge Cricket Podcast. Hey, thank you so much for having me here, guys. How is uh, how's lockdown life treating you? What have you been up to recently other than what we see on social media? <laughs> uh, actually, it's kind of weird because you're not so used to staying at home. But uh, I mean, it's definitely challenging times for us, you know, by things, how it's going and the virus, the way it's spreading and all. But if you go to see and the positive side of this is that we guys are getting to stay at home, which is very rare for us. And, you know, we're having a good quality time and it's nice to even, you know, spend time with your family after so long. So, yeah, kind of enjoying it. And you might have seen it on social media, what happens when my brothers and I get along. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. It's very entertaining. And obviously, the world has now started to expect more and more (laughs) antics from you and your brothers on social media. But tell me, obviously, like you mentioned, you guys are on the road a lot. And so Mm -hmm. spending time at home is good. But how do you how do you keep up with the batting? How do you keep up with batting practice while at home? Yeah, so normally what I do is uh, I plan out, uh, like plan out a day, you know, in a day I make sure like at least one hour I spend it uh, with cricket. So you can't do much because you don't have much space, can't go out anywhere. But I make sure, you know, I have my drills going on, my batting drills. And uh, my dad is there, so he practices the plastic ball at home. And that helps a lot too. So I think, you know, this is the best we can do with the little we have. You know, there's always something or the other we can come up with. So that's what we try to do. And, you know, try to just keep in touch with cricket. Because this is going to end soon. So, you know, I just don't want to, like, lose my touch. I want to make sure that... Whatever I can do in this time, try and make the most of it and, you know, get better at what I have to do. Yeah, absolutely. Really well said. And I, I like your your optimism and saying, let's make the most of it while we can, but also stay in touch. Yeah. Let me ask you, for for those of us who are obviously not uh, professional cricketers, you know, in the regular world, corporate world, etc., we're mm-hmm. spending a lot of time on video conferences, Zoom, mm-hmm. multi-way chats, etc. Without uh, sharing anything you shouldn't, has, has that been your relationship with the other with the other cricketers? Are you guys in touch chatting staying in touch finding a way to to talk to each other during this time oh yeah i think one thing quarantine has done has given us a lot of time to talk to each other and the bonding is getting even better so (laughs) it's it's yeah it's nice actually getting in touch with everybody and yeah in between you know we we definitely keep in touch and you know more of video calls and talking and stuff and we have a lot of things to talk to because you know we all need that the creativity or everybody's getting bored at home or something or the other so yeah we we kind of do all that that's fantastic i'm so glad to hear that um hey jamima for our listeners we want to spend a little time just understanding a little bit more about your journey with the game so obviously you're still very young 19 years old two years just over two years into making your international debut but talk us through just help our help us all our our, uh, listeners understand the journey uh, Mm -hmm. for you with cricket so how young were you when you got into it how did you first pick up a cricket bat have you always been a in a been a batter or did you ever try bowling and help us understand that yeah so I started playing cricket like means professionally in the sense going for practices with my brothers when I was four so when I was three or two and a half or something, my grandfather had gifted me my first bat, which was a plastic bat. And I am someone who cannot sit quietly at home. I'm always up to some mischief or something or the other. So that's how I got into cricket, actually, because of my brothers. Like they used to play cricket at home. So I like, okay, when I picked up a bat, I'm like, okay, when I'm going to play cricket. That's how it all started. That I used to play with the boys in the gully. Like a uh, gully is like a, just a small lane outside our house. 
so that's why I used to play with the with the boys, and we used to stay in Bhandup at that time. And I remember I had a boy cut. So whenever <laughs> I used to bat, people used to come, stop there for four five seconds, and like they used to always ask this question: Is she a boy or is she a girl? And <laughs> after a certain point, I started getting irritated. Like, what is this man? You're just stopping the game. Just go in the side a bit. <laughs> so this was wow. uh, this was the thing that happened. And my dad is actually a, a big fan of cricket. He used to play cricket when he was younger. But then uh, his grand, uh, means my grandfather, his dad was like, uh, no, I think it's better that you focus on studies. Uh, at that time, the mentality was like, you know, cricket won't get you anywhere. Won't give you. There's no security. You don't know what's going to happen and whether it will work. So that's how my dad was forced uh, to leave his passion, and you know he went on to become an engineer, an aircraft in, uh, maintenance engineer. But he always had that passion, and it was always his dream to play cricket. But since he couldn't do it, he made sure that we kids, you know, had the best support, all the supplies, whether were the bat, the shoes, the best of shoes, best of bats. Even though it was kind of expensive for us at that moment, but he made sure we always had the best. And uh, at that time, my dad used to actually just focus on my brothers because he didn't think that you know uh, at that moment that okay I would go on and play cricket for India because we didn't know that women's cricket even existed at that moment. I used to just play because I loved playing. And my brothers used to bat for one hour, and if only if I would do fielding, I would get ten minutes of batting or fifteen minutes of batting at the end of the session. But I used to love it. So I used to do anything for batting. So I used to literally like field one one hour for both my brothers, and then at the end bat for ten minutes. So that's how the journey began. Yeah, that's awesome because Ashwin is my younger brother, okay. and I used to make him field as well. And his, his <laughs> only criteria was only if he bowls enough, then I will yeah. give him the bat. big brothers. Yeah. Are always I, the I haven't gone on to do. Yeah, <laughs> except you went on to do much better in life than I did. You know, but that's a great story. I guess yeah. that's true anywhere. Yeah. Life, so. so afterwards. I had actually gone to watch uh, my brothers play a cricket match at Shivaji Park. So for those who don't know, Shivaji Park is like a huge ground with many cricket pitches on it. So then that day, the sir said, uh, "Today there's going to be girls selection. Uh, you can send Jamima." So me and my dad went back home, got ready fast, came back to Shivaji Park, and I remember as this tiny little young girl, my dad holding the kit bag in one hand, holding my hand, and we went for the selections and. I, I, the moment I went over there, everybody started laughing. Like they were like, "Are she so small?" Is that kind of a laugh? So that time I was a bowler, actually a medium pacer. So my cricketing career started as a oh. bowler. <laughs> so the first ball I bowled, uh, the batter left it. The second ball I bowled, she got bowled, and so that's how I got selected into the Mumbai zones. So after that, you know, nobody laughed at me <laughs> ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's incredible. There's nothing like you know using the bat or the ball to yeah. to, to, to shut up people laughing. Right? That, so this was what twelve, thirteen years old because I know you you played under nineteen. Uh, I was nine, eight or nine. <laughs> nine. Oh, so this is even before, obviously. Yeah. And then yeah, even before I guess that. cut to a couple of years later, at twelve and twelve, twelve and a half. You were playing. Under nineteen, right? Yeah, yeah. For most of us, you know, you expect under so, seventeen to be yeah. the six, all the sixteen and a half year olds. Under nineteen to be the eighteen and a half year olds. You were, you must have been one of the youngest by a long mm-hmm. distance when you broke into those sets. Yeah, I was the youngest. Yeah, playing that. Incredible. And what is youngest. what is the the under seventeen, under nineteen women circuit like in India? Was it mustn't have been very developed at the time? I think it's getting better, obviously now. But what? Yeah. So when I was playing, when I was playing, there was only under nineteen. There was like no under sixteen. Which used to play okay. tournaments and all, but recently, like in the last couple of years, they've started under 16 too, and that's great for women's cricket. As you can see, there's you know a lot of development in India regarding women's cricket. Means it's progressed, and you know many more girls are coming to play cricket, and that's very rare in India. Means for uh, for all of us, you know, for girls playing cricket was like you know something very out of the box when I started playing cricket. But after the 2017 World Cup, you know things have actually I have witnessed it. Things have dramatically changed. And from the time I started playing for India, you know where I practice, there have been many more girls who have joined in. The parents come up to me and you know they tell me, okay, we want to send our daughter to play cricket. Looking at you, she started playing cricket, and you know that's the best compliment we can get as a cricketer. Like somebody started playing cricket because of us, especially a girl in India. So you know the mentality is changing now, and thanks to the girls and everyone actually who's doing so well, you know that inspires so many girls to you know take up the sport and play cricket, and you know why not make it even your career? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, there's no doubt you're still 
young, very early in your career, but there is no doubt the kind of impact you, you, you know, the team, the entire squad, all of you have had on the next generation, on young girls wanting to play cricket. I just, for, from a viewer standpoint as well, 2017, 2018, 2020, obviously just incredible uh, moments and just, you know, we're, from the outside, like I said, we're also incredibly proud of everything you guys have accomplished. So let me ask you before you made, before you made that mm-hmm. debut, right? Where we started to, in the news again, as outsiders hear your name, hear a little more about you. Was that, was the double century, right? The under 19. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it was mid to late 2017. And, you know, I was reading just before this. It sounds like you scored over a thousand runs in that tournament. Yeah. So walk, yeah. tell me a little bit about that and, and that journey. And then were you expecting the, the, the phone to ring and get the India call up at that point? So actually it happened uh, even before the double century, the previous season, I had like scored heavily in the domestic circuit. Like in every match, you know, I had a 50 or I was not out or something like that. But the three most important matches for my selection for India, I had no scores. That was the challengers. That's a challengers uh, trophy. So we have, that's like India A, India B, India C. And that's the most important thing to get into the Indian team. I had a zero and I had one. And after that was playing against Railways. So Railways is uh, the domestic team and they have all India players. Like at least nine of them who are playing are India players. So if you do well against them, it's like, you know, doing well against the Indian team. But uh, it so happened that against these three most important teams, I didn't score. And I'd scored heavily throughout against each and every team, but not against them. And, you know, it was kind of frustrating for me. I'm like, see the most important matches that I had to score, I didn't score and, you know, like what's the use of it and all that. So then next season, you know, I was like, nothing doing, let's continue doing the same thing and just leave the rest in God's hands because God's timing is perfect and I completely believe that. So we worked even harder during that time and we developed different shots. Also, I started playing with the boys, which helped me, you know, get my game uh, up even more because, you know, boys... Uh, playing against them makes you more sharper because if you hit a boy, it hits their ego. Like, Are, ladki ne mara. Means a girl has hit me. So they'll come back harder. The next ball, they'll come back even harder at you. So, you know, that's something, uh, it's a fun challenge playing with the boys and that's helped me a lot. So then the next season, you know, again, I started doing well. I started scoring and my dad always gives me targets. So the 200 was a target for the last year. <laughs> My dad had increased wow. it even more, even more wow. this year. But, you know, that match, actually, my dad and mom, both of them had come. It was actually only for that match they had come. And, you know, just when I scored the double sensi and I lifted my helmet and my bat, I honestly, I didn't feel anything. But when I saw their faces over there, you know, that the pride in their eyes and the joy in their eyes, you know, that just made my day. And I'm like, okay, today I have actually done something by scoring this double century. So that was one of the best things, you know, best memories I have. And after That's that, incredible. when we got, yeah. So after that, when I got my phone from the manager, so I uh, I switched it on and I got calls after calls after calls, like nonstop calls from uh, the press, the media, you know, people had come to our hotel where we are staying and the journalists, everybody calling. And, this was very strange for us because people you should not cover women's cricket in India at that time. But uh, this was actually just a few months after the 2017 World Cup. So that was like a big thing for us because, you know, it has never been that anybody has been following women's cricket. Forget that. I mean, like even domestic cricket, people were like only a few people, you know, a few journalists were following. But that day, you know, my phone kept ringing till the next day it was ringing till 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And finally, I was like, uh, I gave it to my manager. I'm like, ma'am, I'm switching off my phone. I need to focus for the next game. So that's how it was. And that was like the change we seen. And then so that came was the challenge. The, the turning yeah, point, right? yeah, the turning point. I would say that was the turning point for me. And then the Challengers Trophy came. I told you it was important for me to do well there. Like even though I've scored over here, I was under kind of pressure because, you know, there were talks going on like Jemmy Oli scores against weak teams and domestic but when it comes to big teams like railways or challengers, she can't do well. So that's what the talk was going on. So I knew I had to prove my point, you know, in the challenges and I had to do well if I wanted to make it to the Indian team. And things just fell into place. I told you like God's timing is perfect, right? So what happened was that I did well in the challengers and I got a call that, you know, you're going to play for India and all that. And I was just thinking, you know, just some days ago and I also had this discussion with my mom and with my dad and like you know if the previous year even though I'd scored so much if I would get selected 
you know i wouldn't have made such a big impact maybe i would just be making a comeback in 2 3 years again but i'm glad that i didn't get selected that year i got selected the next year because what we worked in that one year you know you know changed everything my game actually had gone to the next level i developed shots played with the boys you know worked on so many things and that's how you know that i knew that okay i was prepared and you know it was a better time to come into the indian team and so you know that was the thing that's a fantastic story and you have a, an incredible amount of maturity for a 19 year old because i mean to you know it must have hurt it honestly at the time to not get selected but just to be yeah. able to look back and say that year was the best thing for you is just outstanding so let me ask yeah. before i ask you about the the indian team were you batting at 3 all along or were you you know where were you batting during the the challenger and the other tour tournaments uh, no i was in opener like always in opener no. i loved opening i opened few matches for india too Yeah but uh, then it so happened that they said you know we need someone who can like anchor the innings and control the innings and you know they thought that I was the best person to suit at number 3 so i was like i don't mind playing anywhere as long you know i can help the team do better and it can help the team win so i was like yes but i still love opening interesting i didn't i didn't have that background but that's great i mean for <laughs> us as the as a number 3 you've done an amazing job cementing so let's fast obviously you had a, an outstanding world cup t20 world cup in 2018 but most recently what's been uh, you know the the huge front and center attention has been the the t20 world cup that mm-hmm. just happened uh in in earlier this year in 2020 so let's talk a little bit about that obviously the tournament started with the out- incredible victory against australia what was what was that like and what was the feeling like you know with the in the dressing room for the for the rest of the team when mm-hmm. you started the tournament beating the out and out favorites yeah so the talk only talk we had in the dressing room was that you know how we start the tournament is going to be very important because you just come from a tri series and you know we had to set the tone right right from the first match so the only talk in the dressing room was don't think about like it's a big tournament this crowd or this or that our only focus was what we can do right that's going to help us win in other words like following the process that's that that's what it meant so we were just stuck to like our plans and you know following the process what we can do so and that worked out pretty well for us you know the first match against australia uh, shifali and smriti they started off like with a flyer and then all of a sudden wickets kept falling so then uh, and the wicket was a slow wicket so then when dipti sharma and i had a conversation in between we were just like we just need to build a partnership anyhow and then we can see what we'll do later on so at that time we were just focusing on single doubles because we knew anything above 125 130 also would be a fighting score uh, considering the conditions and considering our bowling attack so we were just sticking to that plan even from the dressing room the message was coming to us like you know continue with the same thing then we can accelerate at the end and you know we managed to get a 50 run partnership and then dipti also played a very good innings and at the end we got to a decent target i wouldn't say it was still a winning target it was still a fighting target but you know the bowlers just came and they just played you know the best cricket they knew and winning that match in sydney the first game in australia against australia was you know a very big boost for us and we were like really setting the tone for the tournament and you know that was a very good experience too with the crowd and you know with everybody around and cheering us and i have said this in my interviews i didn't feel like i was in australia i felt like i was staying in a ground in mumbai because the kind of support we got from our fans throughout this world cup was like extraordinary and you know it means so much to all of us yeah i mean that it was it was incredible to watch on on tv as well to see in australia almost a sea of blue in the in the crowds right but let me ask you about two people you just mentioned the first is is shafali right kind of mm-hmm. broke on the scene came out of nowhere with the with the team management deciding you need to bat at 3 there was a little bit of a void in that opening slot and it's it's very interesting for for us as fans to see you know 2 years ago you were the the young, one of the youngest i think this you know big hitting new player that came in at 3 and now as you've cemented your spot and the team relies on on you to anchor and you know help guide singles doubles etc like you did in that opening game against australia uh, in the last call it few months shafali seems to have found her her rhythm at the top to be that you know to be an opening big hitter so how do you you know have you been kind of coaching her giving her advice and what is it like to be still two years in your career to, but to be uh, the senior person one of the senior person in the top 3 uh, yeah actually it's kind of weird now to be called a senior <laughs> as you said just two years ago i was the youngest yeah. member and now i have someone younger to me coming in but you know shifali is someone you know like she is 
a fearless character and you can see it in her game i don't think i need to tell her anything about that because she just does what she knows best just watches the ball and hits the ball and i think so she is you know uh, done like a wonderful thing for a 15 year old or a 16 year old you know in the indian team you know playing the world cup at such a young age i mean it's it's crazy what she has done and the kind of start she has given us i think that just making things easier for us down the order so i i think shafali is you know just doing the best she can do you know and helping our team get to good and big scores so that's nice yeah absolutely and then the only other person you said after putting on a decent total not a huge total but a decent total the bowlers came and obviously the the standout in that match as for much of the tournament was poonam yadav right, right. Uh, what is yeah. it like batting against her in the nets i mean it just looks like she's impossible to play sometimes yeah i think you know credit goes to poonam yadav to do what she's doing because she's a very slow bowler and a leg spinner and i believe so many people might have come to her and you know told her are you can't bowl slow like this you need to get that pace in your bowling or this or that but you know ignoring all these things and just sticking to her strength and doing what she did you know now is helping an indian team win a whole game so i think credit goes to that and i really admire her for that because i don't know how many people might have come and told her no you need to bowl quicker you need to do this you need to do that but just sticking to that and you know now she is considered as one of the best t20 bowlers actually the best bowlers in women's cricket so that is like crazy and you know the even she coming out of injury she was injured she had, uh, fractured her hand and that was the first match she was playing after injury I mean the proper match she had played the warm up games but you know for her to you know make a comeback also people may not know like it's actually very difficult you know sitting out for so long not even bowling because she injured her bowling hand and just bowling with a short run up or just releasing the ball but you know to make that comeback for me she did you know that actually is such an inspiration to all of us youngsters like looking up to her like she set the right example how to make a comeback and how not to give up and keep working hard and she is you know the main bowlers for us and she just set the tone right in uh, the first winning of the first match and not forgetting tanya bhatia's wicket keeping in the first game was incredible man like credit goes yeah, to was- tanya bhatia too i think the kind of glove work she did you know gave us it may look easy on tv you know but you know to actually keep the way she kept on that wicket you know just speaks about her class in wicket keeping Yeah, absolutely. We've said on this show before. I think uh, you know. Obviously, we're a little bit biased as Indian fans, and there are lots of good uh, keepers in, in the world. But we said Tanya Bhatia across maybe both the men's and women's games is probably one of the mm. best with the gloves yeah, across you I know across the globe right now. Which we're incredibly fortunate to have her. So mm. okay. So then, so beat Sri Lanka after the win against Australia. Beat mm-hmm. New Zealand. Beat Bangladesh. Washed out semi final, which was obviously pretty unfortunate. But I mean, mm. very clear that as having topped the group. you know in mm-hmm. india would uh, have a route to the final and then you guys traveled to melbourne uh, mm-hmm. showed up at the mcg and for a world cup final and 86174 fans showed up mm-hmm. what was that what what is your memory of that day like walking into the ground 86000 plus fans cheering for you guys i think you know just to be a part of a, of that finals was like a dream come true and uh, not just that but with 86000 plus people present in that ground you know was like a sight you know that we'll never forget because first thing for women's cricket so many people coming is a big thing for us and you know I was speaking to a few of my teammates too they were telling you know jemmy we have played here before and the stadium was literally empty like just maybe one portion was filled with people that to our family members only but for them to see from playing in that empty stadium to a whole stadium packed was something very overwhelming for them and i could imagine that you know i have also played in empty stadiums and you know just being a part of that that match was you know you can't express it in words like how it was so i mean that was one of the biggest plus points for women's cricket that you know okay even girls can play cricket and we have people following us that is also a motivation for us you know to no nothing to we are going to work hard we are going to get better no matter what what's going to happen today we'll just try and give it our best so that was what was going on yeah incredible and then obviously the the result didn't go the way any of us wanted but 
you know, the Australia was just stronger on the day. Help, you know, help me understand how the team was feeling after. How did Team India recover? Because you could, you could argue before the tournament started to be undefeated until the final and reach mm. the finals and be runners up is a huge, huge accomplishment. Mm. You know, Australia has been at the developed women's game for so long. They have a big bash there, you know, so even to just be at that level, compete is a huge win. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I mean, you were in the final, you were there to fight, mm-hmm. you wanted to, to win. So, so how was, what was it like for the team having, uh, having come out short on the final day? I think first thing, the way Australia played that day, I think they deserve to win because they got, I, I think they might have picked, uh, ticked all the boxes. You know, they got a good opening stand in between. Everything was fine. And, you know, to get to that score in a finals, you know, it's always going to put pressure on the opposite side. And they executed their plan so well, even in bowling. I think, and that was, and even their fielding was brilliant. So I think that was the thing that we were missing in our game on that day. We couldn't, you know, stick to our plans and execute what we needed to do. So I think so that was a major difference between us and Australia. And, uh, the talk, you know, it's always sad, you know, you come with a dream and when your dreams are crushed or dreams are broken, you know, it's not easy to take it in. And just the talk in the dressing room, Raman sir just told us that, you know, guys, I'm just proud of y'all. You know, y'all played some extraordinary cricket throughout this tournament. And I know today things didn't go our way. We could have done better. But I just want to say that I'm just proud of the efforts you guys have taken and you guys, uh, you girls have done so you know, that was the kind of talk. And then we just thought, okay, this just let's take it in a positive way. Like we have a lot to learn from this loss. And, you know, so many areas we need to work on, on our fitness, on our fielding, even batting and bowling individually. Everybody, I'm sure, might have sat back and thought, okay, these, these, these areas we need to work on. So, you know, that was the talk that went in the dressing room. And, you know, losing a World Cup or just playing a World Cup, you know, and reaching the final and then losing it, you know, it's not easy to take it in. I, I also took a lot of time, you know, to just come out of that because the kind, you know, you can play it cool on the outside, you can laugh, you can show it off and all, but on the inside, we all were actually hurting and we could sense that in the dressing room. We could sense that even after coming back to India, even though we got a lot of support, people messaging us that we are proud of the way you guys played and all that. But, you know, speaking to my teammates and my friends also, like we could sense that, you know, inside everyone's hurting and we still need, you know, that time to recover from what has happened because it's emotionally draining too as it is uh, as it is physically draining but you know that emotional part is one thing that you know many people don't know don't realize they just see okay we are we are happy or we don't show it off but you know this is something behind the scenes which I noticed this year like behind the scenes nobody knows what we go through as players as individuals and but to get that kind of support when we came back you know actually helped us you know recover from it fast faster because of fans were, you know, throughout everybody was supporting and everybody was like, we still believe in you. So many, so many people actually texted us to say, you know, we are just proud of the way all played and it's not the end. We still believe you girls will win a World Cup and that actually means so much to us. Yeah, I mean, I think there, there's, you said it so well, but if you guys weren't emotionally invested, emotionally drained after, I mean, what well, this is what makes you fighters and sports people at the highest level is that you were there to win and uh, and to fight. So, and I, again, I want to reiterate, you've heard it so many times. You got so many messages, et cetera. But we, as fans, have all been so incredibly proud of the, of the accomplishment, of the work, of the, the results, of the, you know, the, the strength that work ethic the teams showed. And hey, you know, on a lighter note, you, this was your second World Cup, right? The first one was a semi. The second one was a final. Yeah. So this means there's, there's hope, right? There's great room for yeah. So, <laughs> Hey, Jemmy, we want to uh, ask you a few kind of lighter questions before we, before we wrap up today's show. Um, so yeah. we were talking a little, a little about the dressing room. Tell us who, aside from mm-hmm. you in the current women's dressing room, is, is the most fun. It's the most fun. It would be Harleen Deol. We both get along very well. <laughs> so either of us is always up to some nonsense in the dressing room and keeping everybody happy and, you know, putting the smiles on their faces. It's, it's fun to be in our dressing room. Like things have changed from the first time I entered the dressing room and now. That's interesting to hear. So tell, let me ask the opposite then. Who's the most serious in the dressing room? And I don't mean that's a bad thing, but who's the most serious? <laughs> uh, I would not say serious. I would say who talks the least uh, would be maybe Rajeshwari Kaikon. That's interesting. I can, you know, surprisingly, having just watched her perform on TV, I wouldn't have expected that, but I can see it now that you say it. <laughs> yeah. 
That's interesting. And then last question about the dressing room. Let, tell me a little bit about the, your relationship with Smriti. Obviously, you know, on social media, you guys, uh, you talk a lot. You guys seem to be very close. Uh, tell me about, uh, about her as a, as a senior batter, as a, as a player, and obviously as a, as a friend and a mentor for you. Uh, yeah, so Smriti is like my closest friends now. Uh, and it's all because of, uh, actually, it's all because of the first time we met, we were room partners. We had uh, a room partner system. So I think it's because of that, you know, we both have bonded well because we both used to just see each other's faces the whole day and what else to do. We used to just talk and, you know, just chill and all that. So I think that's how our bond became stronger. And Smriti is, you know, like, you know, such a matured person at such a young age. If you go to see, even she is just 23. And from a few years, if you would just see the performance, she's like been performing consistently for the team, even though, you know, this World Cup didn't go the way we wanted it to go. But she has been the one who's like consistently performing at that top order for the team. And not just that, but even helping with, you know, uh, how the team can get better, even decisions on the field. You know, she's always... That one, you know, you know, you can go up to her and you can get good uh, advice from her. And even to make me feel so comfortable, I think uh, credit goes to her because, you know, I was very nervous when I first entered the Indian team dressing room and then in the room. But she made me feel very comfortable. And we start the moment we entered, she made me feel comfortable. And we started speaking like we'd known each other for ages. So that bond was there right from the start. And, you know, it, it's nice to have, you know, a good friend in the dressing room, in the Indian team. You know, it makes things much more easier. And I just told you the kind of person she is, like, even up, like being 23 to be one of the best batters in the world is, you know, something very inspiring, something that we will always look forward to. And, you know, that will motivate us youngsters. Okay, if she can do it, you know, we can also do it. And that's very inspiring for us. That's that's awesome. Uh, in fact, I was going to ask you. We know a lot of uh, cricketers actually sing with with their uh, non strikers when they're both playing. Do you guys have that equation in your batting together? Uh, you know, not really. Because when I bat, I am like a completely different person than what I'm off the field. I get very <laughs> serious, and Smriti is the one who actually talks talks a lot while batting. She loves talking while batting, and I am someone who doesn't talk at all. So sometimes she'd be like, Are you Jimmy speak? Yeah, what? Why are you so serious? This and that. They're like, No, I'm not going to speak. <laughs> so this is what happens. So it's very different when we go on the ground. But it's always fun batting too. And yeah. we have some good partnerships too. And we keep pulling each other's legs in between. So yeah. One funny incident I would tell you in New Zealand was that just the previous day, uh, we were just having a discussion in the room. And then I told Sriti, But no way, you, you can't play the sweep shot. And Sriti is like, Ah, you can't play the pull shot like that. So then the next day, what happened was <laughs> Smriti swept the ball for a six. And I'm like, shot. I had forgotten oh, wow. yesterday's conversation also, okay? I was in my zone. <laughs> Smriti is like, they could be karne ka, ego hurt me karne ka. Means do anything, but do not hurt my ego. <laughs> <laughs> so I started laughing <laughs> at that point. And then in the same match, I pulled uh, like the one of the fastest bowler, Tahuhu. I pulled her. I care and I started smiling. I'm like, kuch bhi karne ka, ego hurt me karne ka. So that's the kind of conversation <laughs> we have. That's great. Good, good to know what works for each other, right? So that's good. <laughs> but tell us, yeah. you, you said you're serious when you're batting, but how is yeah. it to be a social media sensation? And we have to ask you about that video uh, with the security um, <sighs> yeah. dancing to the Bollywood song. I mean, I'm a huge Bollywood fan. I enjoyed uh-huh. that video so much. Tell us a little bit of how that video happened. Okay, first thing, I didn't plan that my social media would go so viral. I just do it because that's, that's how I am off the field and I love doing it. So I just said, why to, you know, fake it, let's just keep it real on social media too, how I, I actually am. But, you know, now people Absolutely. are actually calling me a social media sensation, this and that. You know, I can't take it and I didn't plan for all this. <laughs> it's but, it's uh, great to be it. It's great to be yourself yeah. and be a sensation. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. But uh, yeah, so the video actually what happened, we were in Perth and we just uh, won the game against Bangladesh. And I am the one who always uh, has a speaker in the dressing room and starts playing music. So I just started playing that music and she was supposed to uh, take us to the dining hall. So I started playing music and I was just dancing while playing and she also started dancing. So I, so then my friend was like, wait, I'm taking a video. You guys just continue doing what you're actually doing. 
So that's how the whole video came, and she pulled off the steps better than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, she did really well. I did really for, well for Bollywood for Bollywood yeah. dance moves. She did super. Yeah, I I am sure she might have got many calls after that video. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was fantastic to see. Obviously, you guys having some fun, and you know, for for the the fan to see the, the you behind the scenes, just real uh, having a having a fun time dancing, etc. It was just great. So. I'm glad you guys posted that online, Jemmy. We've we've kept you a little bit long. It's been great chatting with you. I want to ask for, just to wrap us up. Where you know, obviously lockdown right now, like you said, this will end soon. But where does um, where does Indian women's cricket go from here? What's uh, in the short term, and then the kind of the longer term future for you and for the women's game? Actually, uh, we were supposed to have a very busy schedule. Like we were supposed to go to the UK and play against England, and we were supposed to go to New Zealand, and then we had the 2021 World Cup coming on. Uh, but uh, honestly, right now we don't know exactly what's going to happen because we don't have a particular date when this thing is going to end. So we are doing the best we can as cricketers, you know, to you know try and main, try and get make most of the time, as I said before, and try and get better in this time. We don't have much, but you know, we just try our best to do some, do the best we can to stay in touch and you know try and improve our game. Everybody are doing home workouts, and everybody is pretty serious about this, you know, to make sure they are doing their workouts, they're doing their drills, they're practicing at home because we have a group, and you know, everything is under check by BCCI because they have taken that initiative, they have created the group, and they're making sure everybody's working out. Everybody, you know, if any need, if anybody has any need, like with help, what they can do, how they can go about and go for. So BCCI is taking care of that. So I think so. It's a great thing, but. You no, know, we guys are just waiting when we can step on the field and get back in some action. Yeah, absolutely. And for again, for fans, viewers of the game, we are also just waiting to see you back on the field, making some big runs, hitting those big sixes. So, Jamima Rodriguez, thank you so much for being on the Edges and Slitches Cricket Podcast. It's a delight to talk to you. We love hearing your stories, both from on the field and off the field. And it was just great having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for having me. I really enjoyed this time too. And that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was an absolute delight to talk to Jemima Rodriguez, hear her, hear her stories, chat a little bit about her life, her journey, women's cricket in general. As always, send us any questions, comments, feedback uh, to contact at one tip one handed.com or obviously Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at one tip one hand. That's number one TIP, number one hand. We love hearing from you guys. We will be back in another few days or another week with an, another exciting episode. But thanks for tuning in to the Edges and Fledges Cricket Podcast. रिश्ते में तो हम तुम्हारे पॉडकास्ट लगते हैं नाम है फुटबॉल शुटबॉल प्रेजेंटिंग फुटबॉल शुटबॉल अ शो अबाउट थ्री फ्रेंड्स डिस्कसिंग आर फेवरेट गेम ओवर अ बियर समटाइम्स थ्री मे बी इवन फाइव Hi, I'm Shiva, and with me are my two sidekicks, Gaurav Sapre and Kartik Ayer. Sidekick? You mean like Batman's Robin or Van Persie Robin? No, I mean like Alexis Sanchez, but with a little more skill than just playing the piano. Ha! Just shows how the best players at Arsenal are mere bench warmers at United. Oh, thank you, Ayer. But you're a Fulham supporter, so whenever you say anything to support me, I question my beliefs. Just like how Griezmann would say. एक बार मैंने जो डिसीजन ले लिया तो मैं अपने आप की भी नहीं सुनता बैंटर असाइड वी विल टॉक मैच रिपोर्ट्स, ट्रांसफर रूमर्स टॉप कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज फैंटेसी फुटबॉल पिक्स एंड सो मच मोर सो ग्रैब अ बियर एंड ट्यून इन टू फुटबॉल शुटबॉल एवरी वेंसडे ऑन द आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट एप वेबसाइट ऑफ रेवर यू गेट योर पॉडकास्ट चैनस वॉट यू थिंक कपल्स डिट बिफोर टीवी वॉज इन्वेंटेड I don't know go for walks on the beach long drives fancy dinners have more sex maybe but what did we do when we decided to move in together we debated between the chromecast and the fire stick we gave up on sleeping early so we could stay up watching true crime shows we got ourselves three cat babies and basically became the cutest couch potatoes around okay then <laughs> in case you guys still haven't got it we are a tv crazy netflix loving binge watching mr and mrs i'm anirudh kuha i'm jana sequera and if like us you snort tv for breakfast lunch and dinner this is the podcast for you tune in every thursday on the ivm podcast app or wherever it is that you get your podcast from this is mr and mrs binge watch, binge watch.